Gentlemen, the proclamation of the Irish Republic has been adduced in evidence against me as one of its signatories. You think it already a dead and buried letter, but it lives. It lives. From minds alight with Ireland's vivid intellect it sprung. In hearts aflame with Ireland's mighty love it was conceived. Such documents do not die. The British occupation of Ireland has never, for more than a hundred years, been compelled to confront in the field of fight a rising so formidable as that which overwhelming forces have, for the moment, succeeded in quelling. The rising did not result from accidental circumstances. It came in due a recurrent season as the necessary outcome of forces that are ever at work. The fiery pulsation of resurgent pride that disclaims servitude may one day cease to throb in the heart of Ireland. But the heart of Ireland will that day be dead. While Ireland lives, the brain and brawn of her manhood will strive to destroy the last vestige of British rule in her territory. In this ceaseless struggle, there will be, as there has been and must be, an alternate ebb and flow. But let England make no mistake. The generous, high-bred youth of Ireland will never fail to answer the call we pass on to them, will never fail to blaze forth in the red rage of war to win the country's freedom. Other and tamer methods, they lead to other and tamer men. But they must do or die. <laughs>